Hey y'all! Last time we found Volca Castle, the lost landmark. And now LNL Diving Service is the talk of the world. I guess you could say we're sea famous. Why else would some bird haired man we've never heard of before come to visit us? Ah, FF. <laughs> Perhaps you've met our friend GG. Well, you failed, and we succeeded. I don't know. Well, okay, fine, we are a super diver, if you're gonna be like that. <laughs> you ass. <laughs> you bird-haired ass. Yes, okay, we'll find a random ass ring somewhere in the ocean. That surely won't be hard at all. It's not like it's huge. We, we'll get right on that. Jerk. <laughs> That's putting it a little lightly there. Oh, that's, uh, oddly specific. Inconvenient. Thankfully, with our tools, it's relatively simple to actually identify specific types of objects, if we follow the criteria. Basically, we just have to find something with ring-like stats. And perhaps we'll find it. However, I see nothing wrong in making him wait, so let's... Let's go see what else is going on right now on the island. How you doing, Oceana? We could do dive requests, but eh, not yet. Not quite yet. So let's give Mandelbrot some attention. It's been a while since we gave him some training. I knew it! His favorite trick is singing! Fuck you, Red. Training your dolphin is actually pretty important. It may seem arbitrary, but it, it really is important. And you'll see why in due time. It's also hysterical when sped up. I had no idea that this was a thing, but apparently it is. Hooray! Mandelbrot's dicked off enough to figure out a brand new move somehow. Woo! Alright, show us a wave. Even a dog can wave, and you're way smarter than a dog. Sorry, Snorkel. He's giving us a three wave. That's pretty impressive. Oh, John Eric, you with a camera just seems rather silly. I'm a sea captain. Say cheese, friendly dolphin. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. You you earned a fish. Have fish. Now back to work. Of course he broke the record. This is the second time he's ever done the move. It'd be hard for him not to break that record. Ah. You do have to be careful not to overdo it. A dolphin that's overworked is one unhappy dolphin. Nobody wants to see an unhappy dolphin. That's just depressing. What a lovely sunset. Of course, since we gave Mandelbrot some tension, we should go give uh, old Snorkel some loving too. How you doing, Snorkel? Jump there. Aww. 
Dog time. Dog time is precious time. Love dogs. Go dog wild. Wait a minute, that wasn't nearly enough dog time. Dog time, part two. Okay. Alright, let's go take a look at our titles. I don't think we've unlocked much new, but let's change things up a bit. Hmm, what should we be? Could be... Uh, could be a mighty diver, or could be a South Sea protector. Uh, oh, I know. <laughs> Let's be a mighty drifter. <laughs> the strongest plankton. Some sort of horrible death-giving mega jellyfish. Eh, well, I suppose we should actually get some diving in, you know? No point just to hang around on an island. We could go to the aquarium and get on with our merry quest, but there's things to find and fish to touch right near us. Now, we've not actually gave a night dive a chance near here. Chances are, if we do, we'll spot some new things. I'll just rest till... Ah, uh, well... I guess it is already sunset, so we'll just go now. <laughs> just isn't sure if it was sunset enough. Alright, sorry Oceana, but I'm, t I'm taking Mandelbrot with... <laughs> It's been a while since we've had some time to bond with our doll friend. Besides, she's kind of turning out to be something of a death magnet. What's up, Mandelbrot? How's it hanging? So dolphins in this game are not only great for finding specific object types, they also double as UNDERWATER TRANSPORT! Mandelbrot's more than willing to give us a ride, and allows us to speed up a bit and save on air in the process. Thanks, Mandelbrot. You're a true friend. Mama Humpback still hanging around? How you doing, Mama Humpback? Now, the downside of riding around on Mandelbrot is that it's you can't really see zoom spots, and you can't use your sensor to try to look for items, so... It's good for getting around. It's not good for interacting with things. Of course, I actually have a, a little place in particular that I like to scout around tonight. The deep hole. See, we only went there during the day before, and we kind of stopped by sort of near dusk. And that's when Oceana was busy getting harassed by a tiger shark. So now it seems like a good time for us and Mana Brot to go see if we uh, missed anything. I get the feeling that there's more to find there. I just winked at my audio recording software. I don't know if you noticed, but it, I, I did. So. Oh, cool. A big fin reef squid. Or Les Sons cuttlefish squid, after the French zoologist. They're only actually superficially similar to the cuttlefish. They're definitely squid. 
Bigfin and Reef Squid are actually very neat to encounter as they both generate light through the iridescent iridophores and they're also attracted to artificial light. So they'll often go check out night divers and follow them around. It's actually possible that this sort of light attraction is involuntary for the Big Fin Reef Squid, since it'll basically immediately move towards light the second it's turned on and stop everything else. Big Fin Reef Squid go through a rather quick life cycle. They reach sexual maturity after less than 210 days and can reach 1.3 pounds in only 4 months. After reaching sexual maturity, they'll spawn sometimes several times, but other times just once, releasing 20 to 1100 eggs per individual, and then die soon after. Pretty quick life, all in all, in and out. You find something, Mandelbrot? Alright, I'll go look. Oh, well. Okay, whatever. <laughs> oh, hey! <laughs> Look who's still skulking around here! It's a big ol' mean ol' shark ol' old tiger shark. <laughs> With a rather amusing scientific name. Uh, Cuvier didn't actually name it, it's more of a tribute to him. Cuvier being, uh, yours is Cuvier, who was a rather famous French zoologist. He established the concept of extinction in biology, amongst other things. Tiger sharks are fairly notable as far as sharks go, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about them. The tiger shark, Galeocerdo cuvier, is a member of the requiem shark family, Carcharhidae. The requiem sharks are known for being the family of sharks most prone towards attacks on humans, including individuals such as the bull shark, the blue shark, and the oceanic white tip shark. Of course, the vast majority of requiem sharks are very passive, and the amount of injuries caused by the more aggressive individuals is in fact extremely small. The tiger shark is a relatively large shark, capable of reaching a length of over 5 meters, or 16 feet, making large individuals rival the great white in length. Some individuals have even been measured at up to 7 meters, well over 20 feet long. This size helps make the tiger shark one of the apex predators of the tropics. The tiger shark will eat basically anything. Fish, jellyfish, cephalopods, crustaceans, dugongs, seabirds, sea snakes, dolphins, seals, sea turtles, other sharks, even other tiger sharks. They basically will try to eat anything that moves and is smaller than them. Tiger sharks around Hawaii are often fine with horse, goat, sheep, dog, cat, or rat in their stomachs. Mostly it is believed from scavenging. They will also eat inanimate objects like tires, oil cans, and pretty much anything humans throw into the ocean. One of the neat adaptations of the tiger shark is its teeth. A tiger shark's teeth are incredibly strong and sharp, in part specialized for being able to saw through a sea turtle's shell. In fact, tiger sharks will eat every single kind of sea turtle, including the massive leatherback sea turtle, though they tend to focus on smaller individuals. Tiger sharks are not high-speed predators, nor are they pack hunters. A tiger shark swims around alone, slowly, almost sluggishly, prowling for signs of prey. When they do detect potential prey, either using their wonderful sense of smell or excellent eyesight or their ampullae lorenzi, they will use their powerful muscles to strike in a burst of speed. Their slowness actually works very much to the benefit of the tiger shark. It allows them to conserve energy while making it difficult for their prey to detect them coming. As the tiger shark is one of the sharks most prone to attacking humans, they are one of the sharks that most often suffers from culling in shark vengeance kills. Between 1959 and 1976, nearly 5,000 sharks were killed around Hawaii, funded by Hawaii's tourism industry in an attempt to reduce attacks. It had almost no effect. The tiger shark is also routinely captured for its fins, flesh, and liver. Its liver has a high concentration of vitamin A, which is used to make vitamin oils. 
The fins of the tiger shark is used in shark fin soup, a traditional Chinese luxury dish served at weddings, and they are a preferred capture for this purpose due to the size of their fins. However, the tiger shark's numbers thus far have not been heavily impacted by finning, though this may be changing. While the tiger shark indeed attacks humans, the vast majority of these attacks arise out of misidentification, just like with the great white shark. Low visibility conditions in areas of turbulent surface waters can lead to bites when the shark confuses humans for its more preferred prey, such as seals. While it is not recommended due to their curiosity and propensity towards eating, well, anything, it is possible to swim safely amongst tiger sharks in conditions with better visibility and no chum in the water. They are far from being mad man-eaters. As with all sharks and animals in general, one must be aware of the risks associated with them and show them respect, ideally from a distance. Plus, as we've established before, tiger sharks are notorious for feeding on bare grills. So really, they can't be all that bad. I'm not the best at finding things. Sometimes it seems like it should be right in front of you, but uh, sometimes it's just actually just kind of touching the edge of the search. Oh well. One thing they've definitely improved in this game is how close dolphins will actually follow you around and track with you. They sort of track your motion and kind of keep kind of keep an eye over where you're going. They always stay nearby. That's why you'll often see Mandelbrot kind of following our motion, which is neat. Don't have to deal with no Skippy bullshit anymore. You see anything, Mandelbrot? The uh, Beyond Tang. So the deep hole is implied to be some sort of impact crater of some kind. Probably just a meteoroid of some kind hit here and made a fairly sizable impact crater. One thing most people don't realize is that while we have an atmosphere that does in fact protect us from quite a lot of meteoroids and whatnot, quite a lot do actually get through though. Our surface isn't going to be that dissimilar from the moons when you get down to it. The difference is that we have a lot of erosion going on, and a lot of water also to cover things up. It's entirely possible that you're living right now within some sort of very old, very worn down impact crater from a fairly large impact. The fact that this one's distinct sort of implies that it's not too old. Most really old impacts tend to cover themselves up or be, you know, in general, they kind of go away after time. The impact crater from the Cretaceous Extinction Event, for example, takes up a sizable area of the Gulf of Mexico, as well as parts of the Yucatan Peninsula. So oddly enough, the Mayan temples are right in the middle of where the dinosaurs died. Settle down, Mr. Tiger Shark. You need to relax. Chill out. Oh no. The hole. Spook hole. Or the mouth of truth. Whatever. So Pacific white-sided dolphins are extremely active and playful dolphins. They frequently just hang out with random other Pacific cetaceans. They're extremely fast too, capable of swimming at speeds of up to 55 kilometers per hour, 
is pretty quick, even for dolphins. Oh, Mandelbrot. You just hanging out with your friends. You're not even related. But you can still be friends with them. For a long time, it was actually considered scientifically impossible for dolphins to achieve the speeds that they do. In 1936, British zoologist Sir James Gray proposed his Gray's Paradox, where he outlined the power a dolphin could exert based on his physiology, which seemed apparent to him to be insufficient to overcome the drag forces in water. Essentially, dolphins were thought to be going far too fast to make sense for their body types. So the only real explanation that could potentially be given is that dolphins have some sort of unique anti-drag property to their skin that's allowing them to kind of resist the drag of the water. And this is true to some degree. <laughs> Mandelbrot, what are you doing there? <laughs> While it's true, it turns out that his initial assumption was slightly, well, quite a lot incorrect. He assumed that the force that dolphins could exert was just not enough. It turns out dolphins are just strong. They're just full of muscles and super strong. Scientists in the mid-2000s have spent a fair bit of research documenting just how strong dolphins are. And it turns out Gray was more than a factor of 10 off in terms of how much peak force a dolphin can exert with just each thrust of its tail. Of course, we have learned stuff from dolphin skins, even of ourselves. And we've jet made things such as like wetsuits, which in fact do help divers go a bit quicker underwater, though it's mostly there for warmth purposes and protection from stingy, stingy things. I've gotten jellyfish on exposed skin before, and it's it's not fun. I basically went insane. Well, that that was because I had a heat stroke at the same time, but that that wasn't fun. Heat stroke and jellyfish sting, not good combinations. I dreamed of dwarves. Dwarves everywhere. Tiny little elfmen. Counting tiny little coins. Infinite tiny little coins. Yeah, I think we can handle this, Mandibra. What do you think? Eat it, rock. Thanks, Mandibra. You're a true friend. I'm hideous! Why am I so ugly? Who would have thought? What were you attracted to? Pygmy sperm whale. So pygmy sperm whales are one of three species in the sperm whale family, the, the Kogiidae. We're not quite sure what Kogis are, or Kogias are, rather. And uh, they're very strange, and there's no real whales quite like them. They're unique. They're not often sighted at sea. We mostly know stuff about them from stranded carcasses and whatnot. I don't see anything in here. What did he see? You see anything in here, Mandelbrot? Uh, well, looks like we wiped out most of the map. Well, if not all of it. You know. well, we made a pretty good dive here, I think. Even if we didn't find a thing. I want the thing. Give me the thing. I wonder where the gold is. Give me the gold. Also, is a good chance to see that the pinecone fish are in fact lightening up. God bless you, porcupine fish. Well, I guess we should return to the boat before, you know, we die. Usually a good assumption. And we level up our man, or woman. Oh, 
little bit there. And so close. Ah, one square. One square. Hmm. Well, I'm not going to let that stand. Time for take two. This time I got Oceana with me. Oceana, perhaps you'll help me find a thing. Now, Oceana, remember, there's a tiger shark down here, and he's pissed off. Don't let him near you. Let's learn a thing from last time. Let's see, there's a little bit of map down this way that I miss right near the exit. With that, I should be good. What's up, leafy dragons? Now I got the camera, so I can get his information, too. Of course, we already talked about him then so before, so there's not really that much that we missed. Hey, a coin! Camilla Pardalis is a large but faint constellation that represents a giraffe. The name comes from the belief that the giraffe is an offspring of a camel, which has a long neck, and a leopard, which has spots. Good old giraffes. Do you know that the giraffe is the tallest living terrestrial animal? It's true. Not really surprising, I guess, thinking about it, but it's true. a fact of absolutely no notability whatsoever. Alright, Oceana, brace yourself. Brace yourself for finishing map. I, th I think that's it. Probably gonna be it. I hope it's it. More map you complete, the more money you get. Map equals money. That's new. Banded angelfish. Now fish actually can sense sounds. They don't have an external ear, but they have the ability to sense sounds. They accomplish this by an in inner ear, located inside their body, and a lateral line, which is a sort of sensory organ running down its body. They can use it to, to sense changes in water currents and pressure, which allows them to functionally hear. After all, hearing is just the sensing and interpretation of sound waves passing through our air, our medium, which is pretty similar to, you know, how it is with fish and water. Fish that swim in swarms together, or actually manage to do that without intersecting with each other because of their lateral lines. They can sense the motions that each individual fish is making as they swim, and, you know, they can swim around each other, follow the currents. He's merely big boned. Hmm. I get the feeling that we're probably missing some items down here. Oceana, you're the best at finding zoom spots, so I'm gonna need you to help out here. Monoceros is a faint constellation that represents a unicorn. It was identified by Petrus Plancius, who also identified Camelopardalis in 1624. Almost like we have something of a theme going. How odd. 
it's highly probable that the Monoceros is in fact describing the Rhinoceros, you know, which does have a horn on its face. And another. Scorpius is one of the constellations of the Zodiac. It represents the giant scorpion sent by Gaia, sometimes Artemis, to kill Orion. The claws of the scorpion are notably not depicted in the constellation. That's because the constellation Libra was considered to represent the scorpion's claws and was not formally seen as a pair of scales until Roman times. So I guess that's what, you know, that's what the uh, pygmy uh, sperm whale found. Found a cool coin. Who knew? Well, I think we've completed the map, so let's head back up. Fuck! Damn you, map squares! Ah, <sighs> screwed by map squares again. Well... Let's head back and get some of these items we found looked at, regardless. Maybe we found something neat. Maybe it will justify our dive. Nancy, come please. I found thing. Please look at. Bring your laptop. <laughs> oh, you jokester. Ah, a favor, huh? Yeah, I was just there. Why did you have... Why? What? What? Ah, whatever. Yeah, well, we'll find your scissors. Tell me about this rock. Is there anything special about it? How oh, good. Ooh, it's red coral. She found this in the first game, too. It's a specific, you know, kind of group of subspecies of marine coral. Often used for making jewelry. And hey, it's a pearl. Also used for making jewelry. What do you know? What a gemtacular find we're having today. Well, we finally have some money. Let's see what we can buy. We could buy some gear. Though none of this gear does anything. It just sort of looks. We can actually buy some stuff. What I really want, though... I really want this medium bag. The bag upgrades allow me to grab bigger things. That's important. Hmm. Alright, I guess I'm good. Yes, yes, we'll find your scissors. Ah, but that'll be next time.